The cheetah is used to the paparazzi, so if you want to whip out your phones and all that good stuff, but look at the dog. Look at how they hang out. All right, Sarah. Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you can tell us all about what's going on here, because we're all amazed. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody to Feast with the Beast. We're happy to see you all out here. Like Rod said, my name is Sarah. I'm a supervisor in the carnivore department. And joining me tonight, we have Kevin, who is the other supervisor. He is working with our five-year-old cheetah named Keto. Also, we have here our Anatolian shepherd named Taji, and she is being walked by her handler, Josh. And then we have Courtney, who is what we call our cheetah backup. Because Kevin needs to concentrate on the cheetah and what he's doing, we have Courtney as kind of his personal bodyguard. <laughs> so thanks so much for coming out. Some of you may have seen our cheetah ambassadors before. You may have met Keto or Kabori. We actually have two brothers. And they were not born here at the zoo, but they came to us very, very small. They were born at a place called the White Oak Conservation Center, which is in Uly, Florida. They specialize in breeding endangered species. And the cheetahs are not easy to breed in captivity, but they do a really good job with them. But for whatever reason, Keto's mom did not choose to take care of them. So we went down and picked up Keto and Kabori. And if you can imagine, the first time I met Keto, his eyes were still closed and he fit in the palm of my hand. It's crazy to think that five years later, this is the same cheetah. Now he weighs a little over 100 pounds, and he lives on exhibit with his brother, Kabori. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, why do you guys have a dog at the zoo? And we're trying to get across a conservation message. In the early 90s, in places like Namibia and Botswana, farmers and ranchers would kill cheetahs because they would go after their livestock. So in those early days, cheetah conservationists would provide Anatolian puppies to the farmers and ranchers. Now this particular dog, whoever you raise them up with, they're going to take care of. So they would get young puppies, they would raise them up with their, with their sheep and their cows, and they would become the perfect guard dog. Now along comes a cheetah out in the bush, thinking that maybe he can get an easy meal out of a, a young goat or a sheep. And then here comes a 150 pound dog that has a really, really scary bark. What do you think the cheetahs are gonna do? They're gonna run the other way. Don't tell Keto. I'm gonna try and keep this a little quiet, but cheetahs are the weenies of the cat world. They really are. Everything about this cat sitting up here says speed. They're the fastest land mammals. They can go up to 70 miles an hour. It's amazing. Maybe not Keto. He's a little more well-fed than his wild counterparts. But they sacrifice a lot of things that other apex predators have for speed. So rather than getting into a confrontation, they're going to run the other way. So here we have Taji, and she actually isn't as big as a male would get. She's about 137 pounds. Should she be 137 pounds? Uh, probably not. She's a little heavier than she should be. She has been on a diet. We do regulate that very closely, but she is a very, very big dog. Now, Taji has helped us out in several ways here at the zoo. Not only is she a companion to the cheetahs, but it's super awesome that we get to have a dog at work. How cool is that? And also, she's helped us raise other babies. We put Taji with the cheetahs when she was about nine, ten weeks old, and they grew up together to see our Anatolian and our cheetah. We have lots more animal love events going on this evening. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the deep color. Blue. 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 No, it's Look at it. 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 Look at it.